If you've watched my channel before, you probably know that I like to shoot a lot of film. I've made a couple of videos shooting different types of films all across the country. But the thing with film is that it's kind of expensive. Buying a roll and then developing the pictures after you've taken them costs on average like $30 to $40. And if you pay for lab scans, it's even more, maybe around $50. That's a lot for a picture. So to try to save some money, I scan my own film pictures with my digital camera. What I do is I put a macro lens on my camera, attach my camera up to a copy stand, and then put my film over my iPad and then scan each picture. The thing is, this process is really frustrating. I have to move the film to the next picture, blow dust off of it, and then press the camera shutter and then hold down the film until the picture is taken and then do that all over again 36 times for a whole roll. That also means that scanning film takes a lot of time. On a good day, I might scan a roll of film in maybe 20 to 30 minutes, but on a bad day, it can be up to an hour if my scans aren't just right. It's gotten to the point where thinking about having to scan film is discouraging me from shooting film in the first place. And that's not what I want. I want to enjoy shooting film pictures. So over the last three months or so, I've been working on a side project that uses Arduino boards and motors and 3D printed parts to make a system that automatically scans film for me. Let me show you. Before I started building, I sat down and I tried to identify the specific pain points behind my problem. In design, it's really important to break down a problem into its pain points and correctly identify what those pain points are. In my case, I realized that in the process of scanning film, what bogged me down was how much I had to move my hands up and down. First to move the film to the next picture, then to go up to the camera and press the camera shutter, and then to go back down again and then blow the dust off the film and then hold it down. I also realized that having to hold down the film with my hands was another pain point because sometimes I wouldn't hold the film completely flat. That meant that I would ruin some film scans and overall it would take me longer. So I would need something to hold down the film for me. So here's a film scanner. It consists of a camera holder up on the copy stand where the camera sits with a servo motor that presses the shutter button, a film holder with a stepper motor to advance the film forward, a place for the film to pile up, and the electronics and buttons tucked away in this plastic case. Let me show you how the film scanner works. First, I load the film in and then advance it to the first frame using this potentiometer. Then I click this button and then the system clicks the camera button and moves the film forward for me 36 times automatically, meaning that my hands are free to use my air blower to dust off the dust off of my film. All of the film is gathered at the circular piece in the end, and then the process is complete. This project is based off the work of a brilliant person named Sinan Isik. I hope I pronounced your name right, sorry if I didn't. But he had this film scanner project published online with the CAD files and the code all published. And so that was a really big help in making me build my own system. There are a couple of modifications that I made to a system though. The first thing is I designed this custom camera holder for my Sony a7 III. Sinan uses a software approach to get his camera to click automatically, but I wanted to approach this problem mechanically and I wanted to design my own CAD piece. So I designed a camera holder that holds a servo motor to physically press the camera button. I also realized that having to screw on the camera to the copy stand was really clumsy and had potential for disaster. So I designed a slot in the camera holder that fits the Joby Gorillapod tripod plates. That way I can slide my camera easily in and out. 
As you can see, it took a lot of PLA plastic to get the dimensioning just right. CNN also uses a LiDAR sensor to know how much to move the film forward, but I just chose to hard code it into the stepper motor code instead. CNN has five buttons on his project, but I reduced the number down to three and I changed the functions of them. First, I have a potentiometer that allows you to control the speed of the film and advance it how much you want. This button automatically starts the 36 shot process for you. The second button, if you hold it down, it'll stop the process in the middle of scanning in case something went wrong and you need to fix it. And then this third button will activate the servo motor to press the shutter button. I also wanted a screen to display the status of how many shots the process had remaining, but I ran out of digital ports on the Arduino Nano, and I tried to put another board on it, but I haven't quite figured out how to get the screen to print correctly over two boards, so that'll have to be a project for another day. And then another small note is that I had to replace a screw on the copy stand. The original wasn't long enough, so I had to find a longer screw with the same thread. And there you go, that's my film scanning project. Overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's fixed so many of my pain points and made film scanning so much more convenient. And it was really fun learning a lot more about electronics, how to 3D print parts, and how to design parts in SolidWorks. And my school has this uh, like slogan called whole brain engineering. And the idea is like you use both the analytical like STEM side of your brain and also the creative uh, humanity side of your brain together in engineering. And I really feel like this project was a good example of whole brain engineering. Because first in the beginning, I used my creative side to identify the specific pain points in my process and how I could address those. And then I used my analytical skills to actually design those parts, um, print them out, and then actually bring the electrical and mechanical systems together to bring the system to life. So thanks, Dean Ottino. Whole brain engineering. If you're interested in doing this project, it is a lot to learn, I admit, but I think it's really worth it in the end. It's very fulfilling. And if you have an interest in both electronics and photography, this is the perfect project for you. Thanks guys for watching. I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, I'll put a link down to Sina's blog and my parts as well. And I'll see you in the next video.